Oh boy, they say Greg almost got fired for this one now. My beautiful patriots, my brothers and sisters, beautiful people around the world, I hope everybody is blessed, well, healthy, and that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life, man. Y'all put a smile on y'all face, man, because pretty soon we're going to crack open a cold one. These cases are falling apart, man. Complete sham, wasting people's time, everybody lying, 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 lying. I told y'all. I can't wait to see their face when Trump walks back in there and takes that hand and stroke it through that mullet and then get real petty with it and tell the fake news to take a picture of this and he takes that Make America Great hat on and smiles. <laughs> oh man, I know a lot of y'all only watch Fox because Greg on it. Look now, a lot of y'all watch Fox because Greg is on there now. I know, I know now. We see the comments, we see the surveys, we see the polls. Yeah. If Greg wasn't on there, y'all wouldn't even watch Fox. But they say Greg almost got fired for this one, man. Let's jump straight in. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And just know that we're wishing the best in everybody's life, man. We are sending out a lot of more hats. And a lot of people that emailed me this past weekend, um, and even in the previous that haven't gotten their hat yet, expect your uh, more y'all to get hats this week we broke we we hit a huge number of hats that we sent out this past week and uh thank y'all for showing so much love in the comment section people tagging me facebook instagram twitter you know a lot of amazing pictures of everybody saying rick sent me a hat yes indeed man and there was a, a amazing comment uh, that really broke my heart it was sad y'all know i actually read the comments of a, uh, and I, I'm not gonna say their username because I honestly didn't even know how to pronounce their username on YouTube. But they had a sad story um, of explaining, you know, of their their struggles in life that they're going through and everything. And I'm still waiting. I responded back to you in the comment section. You know who you are. I responded back to you. So please email me. I want to get you and your family uh, some hats. So um, and again, y'all know we've sent hats out to families, people on fixed incomes, veterans. People that have done amazing things in life, man. Or people that are struggling as well. So please do not. Everybody, I treat everybody the same, man. I don't look down. On, we are all, hey, at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all people, man. We're all humans. We all have our own battles, our own story. We're all going through something, whether you like it or not. You know, and I encourage y'all to spread the love, man, because we are going through some crazy we are living in some crazy, sick, dark times right now, man. And people are struggling at an all-time high. I tell y'all, suicide rates, depression, anxiety, PTSD, all-time high in 2024. But we're going to continue to be a blessing and make people smile around the world. We're going to keep sending out hats. Um, so please, do not feel, feel afraid to email me. Email me again if you feel like, oh, Rick, I'm frustrating you. Or maybe I don't think you'll choose me. Email me again. Yeah. Email me again, y'all. But it's in the description box down below. It's free of charge. Okay. And again, I'm waiting for that one special person to email me back. I just responded to you in my comment section like 30 minutes ago because that comment left it it, it still it took a toll on me this morning. And I can I can still feel it in my heart, you know. Um reading that comment. It was very, very sad, man. And again, you just never know what people are going through, man. So Let's jump straight in, man. They say Greg got damn near got fired off the show for this one. <laughs> Fox almost got rid of Greg for this one, y'all. And Rosie O'Donnell reportedly sent a text to Michael Cohen saying, breathe, relax. You got this. I love you. Which is the same thing she says to her proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. I wouldn't want that job, or would I? <laughs> to the news, his testimony. What the hell, Greg sipping on? I think Greg. You need to give, what you? What are you sipping on, Patriots? Hey, we, we need to be sipping on what he's sipping on. That's how you know it's good if you hit that. That's that quench thirst right there. Pranked, <laughs> cause he got pranked. <laughs> So the case against Trump is falling apart like Nancy Pelosi's face in direct sunlight. 
Yesterday, under cross-examination, Trump's attorney accused Michael Cohen of lying about a crucial phone call that was sold as the direct link between the former president and the Stormy Daniels payoff. So let me get this straight. Michael Cohen lied? <laughs> what are the odds? That's like finding out Jesse Waters shaves his back. <laughs> So instead, oh. Trump's team says it was a conversation about a frickin' crank call. It's confusing, so let me paint the picture for you. In 2016, Cohen got a prank call from a 14-year-old kid. Cohen then texted Trump's bodyguard about it, who told him to call him. So Cohen rings the bodyguard, and they chat for 96 seconds. Trump's lawyer says Cohen whined mostly about the annoying Brad on the call. But Cohen says <coughs> he talked about the porn payoff, too. But like Jesse's new book... No one was buying it. <laughs> you know it's bad when even MSNBC and CNN are making sense. It was like a crescendo oh, because you, the drama of the moment was so clear to everybody in the room. Do you have doubts that that conversation happened the way Michael Cohen testified on his direct examination? Absolutely. Oh. I think it's devastating, I mean, for Michael Cohen's credibility on this, I mean, in this one particular topic. I don't think I've ever seen a star cooperating witness get his knees chopped out quite as clearly and dramatically as what just happened with Michael Cohen. That makes the district attorney's office look sloppy in addition to making Michael Cohen seem like a self-assured either fabricator a sham. or forgetful person. It casts doubt on the veracity of a ton of his testimony. Oh, oh wow. Who would have predicted that Cohen's entire case against Trump would rest on a crank phone call? But hey, maybe the court should call up Prince Albert. Oh wait, he's, he's currently in a can. Something about that Prince Albert, huh? Well, there's always Mike Hunt. <laughs> oh boy. So the idea that somehow this piece of evidence, a 96 second phone call about a teen crank caller would devastate the credibility of Michael Cohn. Think about that. It's like an unpaid parking ticket devastating the credibility of OJ Simpson. It's like one fart destroying the sex appeal of Gerald Nadler. <laughs> That's I love how surprised the media is that this case may be full of crap. It's like going into a Port Authority restroom at 1 a.m. and surprise there's not an attendant in a tux handing you breath mints. It's like going into Larry Kudlow's bedroom and shocked that there's a mirror on the ceiling. <laughs> think about it. This what the case, hell? About this case at its most basic level. They brought in a porn star and a convicted perjurer to convict Trump of a crime they have yet to actually define. Sure, it's a humiliating day for the prosecution, but it's a stain on our, on our entire legal system. This case never would have been brought if it was anyone but Trump. But the truly shameful behavior isn't from the prosecution, but the media who cheered it on. They partnered up with the most corrupt entities simply to destroy what they see as a common enemy that's embraced by half the country. These media assholes make queers for Palestine seem logical. No one... And, uh, I, li no I like this segment, y'all. anymore. That's why so many are losing money, which is why the next chapter in the story of legacy media will be chapter 11. <laughs> Jamie, uh, we all know that you're so lonely. You are grateful when you get a prank phone call. Uh, what do you make of this whole new development? You've been watching the trial. Yeah, a lot of times, even like telemarketers, I'm, I'm like, don't hang up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I have been following this trial since you started your monologue, and a lot of stuff. Um, since you started your monologue. <laughs> you know what I take issue? I take issue with Anderson. I, I like what he said. But he said it ruins his credibility on this topic. On this topic. Which that's, that's not what credibility means. It yeah. should, if you're dishonest on one topic, your credibility is that now means can we trust you on yes. other things. So I thought they were trying to even give him a little leeway there where he didn't deserve. I just feel bad. This trust is over. It should be over. We should save our money and resources. I just feel I, This is just something I would never. We should save our money and resources. 
have to, like I will never have to pay a girl hush money. Like every single time. <laughs> But like, I, like every time I've ever slept with a girl, she right after she goes, no one can find out about this. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess uh, the secret is to be really. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's a point of saving. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Dang I was thinking about this. I wonder if this crank caller realizes that he might have just made the most impactful crank call in history. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a crank call that had any consequence, you know, other than upsetting a senior citizen or pissing off a guy who manages a deli. I, I want to meet this individual. <laughs> um, oh, boy. He was 14 back then, so he's probably like 22 yeah, now, he, maybe. Legal age. I did the math before the show time. <laughs> um, I, I consider myself an authority on arrogant, lion, grifty, skeeve bag bitch boys. Mm. <laughs> Not the prank caller, I mean Michael Cohen, the big swinging dipstick who thought he was going to get oh. a cabinet position <laughs> but was going to demand the Secret Service deal with the 14-year-old prank caller. And you know this 96-second phone call with Keith Schiller, the bodyguard, was all about the prank caller. Yeah. Like, you have to stop this guy from calling me and asking me where Dick Gazinia is. Yeah. Who is Dick Gazinia? <laughs> I don't know who Dick Gazinia is. Who? Where is he? You know the whole 90 seconds. It's a circle of... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This segment is something, boy. I'm here for it. But the thing is, I mean, it's like Tyrus kind of mentioned this before yesterday that like maybe it was more than just a crank yanking, you know, maybe he was yanking his crank to the crank yanker. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, let's let's let's. <laughs> oh, man, I just. <laughs> what? I, I, as a bodyguard, we get called for everything, mm -hmm. but I have never ever met a bodyguard who was Old like, man, my client called me, had a prank caller. And, yeah. uh, I told him to press star 67 and find a little bastard. Like, this doesn't happen. Yeah. He called up and he's like, I might have sent something to someone that was, mm -hmm. that was what, boss? Um, 14. <laughs> yeah, you need to call somebody. Else. Calls That's <laughs> exactly what that was. Nobody calls over a yep. prank caller. He, and it's still early. We'll find out, but it, yeah, he. What did they say on the phone that got you so upset? Or was it their mom that answered when you called? Like, yeah. Come on. I hate it when the mom picks up. <laughs> I want the grandmother. God. Yeah, when mom answers the phone, the Dick Gazinia part's not so much fun anymore, is it? <laughs> oh boy. Have you ever been prank called? Is, you're too young to have a prank phone call, right? Because we, prank, you can't call, you can't do prank calls anymore. It doesn't exist. People know who's calling. Yeah, I know. I, I prank called people before when I was a kid. Yeah. But I do just want to put something you said in your monologue that I, I didn't love, which what? is you said, a, you know, a, a porn star and a perjurer. Mm -hmm. And I think that putting porn stars and Michael Cohen in the same category is an unnecessary besmirchment of porn stars. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> like, uh, many, many porn stars, I'm sure, have much stronger value systems than this smarmy lying man. Yes. I, I, I mean, the, he's a perjurer. And they're like, oh, wait, he lied? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a perjurer. Uh, and then also this narrative of him, is this, to Ty, with Tyrus's point, spe this guy who's this brave man speaking truth against this, you know, immense and surmountable power. That kind of also breaks down when you realize, you know, he's calling Secret Service about a 14-year-old boy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not exactly like a David and Goliath situation there. You know what he probably wanted, I was thinking about this, that he wanted somebody to get the phone number. He didn't know where the call was coming from, so he probably called them. Because you know how, like, co cops and people, they can get, like, yeah. they can run. That might have been part of it. But it is kind of, it is pretty funny, though. You yeah. have to admit. You, need, you, you couldn't handle a 14-year-old boy oh. crank calling you on your own? Uh. Yeah. <sighs> That's why I keep him in the trunk. Oh! 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 But a lot. Oh! Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh! Oh, man. God, little Greg, man.
Oh, God, I tell you, boy, that was that was a show right there. That segment there, I'm there for it, man. And this case is completely over. As you all seen, left and right, these cases are collapsing. Election interference at its finest. And pretty soon, we're going to crack open the cold in November, baby. I'm going to start emailing a lot of you guys back today. Um, well, I've, I've already been emailing y'all back, but we received so many emails over the night. So I got a lot of y'all to respond back to. I got a lot of things to check out. Uh, thank y'all for sending me a lot of videos to check out, react to, and post on the channel. Um, tons of you guys are going to be getting your hat, hats as well. Like I said, we did, we killed it this past week and weekend, man. And we're going to kill it this week as well. So uh, we're going to be blessing a lot of family members on the channel. I love y'all, man. And we I encourage y'all to continue to spread the love around the world. Because, hey, man, we are living in some crazy dark times, man. And, hey, I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. Peace and love, y'all.